Okay, let's do this one more time. So, um, you have successfully installed Blender. Hopefully, it's the same version 4.4. However, if you have a different version, this still should be what you're looking at because it has been the default opening for a very long time and it is likely to be also the same thing you'll be seeing in future versions and if you click anywhere what you're going to be seeing is the workspace um, now if it's the very first time you open a 3d software it might look a little bit overwhelming but in the next few minutes we're gonna make sense of the interface and you'll see that this is a modular interface so um, once you get a sense of the modules everything is gonna uh, make sense it's it's pretty it's pretty simple really now before we go ahead just a few quick notes that are going to make your life easier if you go to preferences in case you have a really high resolution monitor or display and everything is looking pretty small right now, you can go to interface and change this option, the resolution scale. Uh, right now I have set it at 1.2, but you can change it to say like 1.5 and everything is gonna be a little bit bigger or set it back to default, which is one and everything is gonna be pretty small. Um, I'm gonna leave it to 1.2 so you can see well enough. Now the second thing that I want to share is that if you are on a laptop, you might want to go to input and um, it is likely that on a laptop you do not have a numpad, which is that part to the right of the keyboard. And there are several shortcuts that are very useful that we're going to use pretty soon. And so if you don't have a numpad, you won't be able to access those shortcut unless you enable this option. Again, this is for laptop. And then one more thing is if you do not have a mouse, you should get one as soon as possible because it is not a good idea at all to attempt to do any serious 3D modeling without a mouse. However, for the time being, if you want to go ahead, maybe you're on a laptop and you want to use the trackpad, you can emulate the 3D button mouse with this option and this should uh, carry you for like about five minutes. Um, and then still, you're going to need a mouse pretty soon. So go get one. Okay, so we're ready to start. And like I probably mentioned before, this is the workspace. Now the workspace is a, a modular interface and the modules that make it up are called informally panels or more technically editors. And you can recognize an editor because each one of them at the top left corner has an icon. Uh, that is unique to the kind of editor that is open. So in the default layout, you're going to see a 3D viewport, a timeline, a properties panel or editor, and the outliner, okay? Now, the idea of the workspace is that you can customize it and personalize it however you want but also depending on which task you might be doing at any given time. So say that right now I was doing something with textures, what I could do is pull up this uh, part of the editor and switch this timeline, which right now I don't need. And by clicking on the top left icon, I'm going to see a drop down menu with every single editor that exists within Blender. And if I was doing something with textures, I would probably open up the shader editor. Okay, so again, the idea is that you can customize this, however, it makes the most sense to you. And for what you're doing, you can split the view, you can simplify it, you can do whatever you want. And also, at the very top, you probably have noticed that there are tabs with different names 
like modeling, sculpting, texture painting. Now, what these are, are presets. So when you click on them, what's really happening is simply that Blender is reconfiguring for you automatically the workspace, opening up editors that you might need for that task. However, um, especially at the beginning, I recommend that you stay in the default layout and we're going to customize it anyway, uh, depending on what we're doing. Okay, so this is a very quick introduction to the interface of the workspace. And in the next video, we're gonna learn how to move around the 3D scene, navigate it, orbit around objects, and so on.